Welcome to Big Eat Small Spots. We're in Fremont, Washington today, about 10 minutes north of downtown Seattle. There's a lot to do and to see here in this little neighborhood. First, you have the Ship Canal, which connects Lake Washington to the Puget Sound. And then right up the way, you have the Gaswork Park, which used to be Seattle Gas Light Company. And just a few blocks away from there, you have the Fremont Troll, which resides under the Aurora Bridge. Kind of creepy, but I love it. It's kind of cool too. Also, one of my favorite things to see is the bronze Vladimir Lenin statue. There's also boutiques, thrift stores, and obviously restaurants. There's approximately 50 restaurants in this little itty bitty neighborhood. So join me today on Big E Small Spots and let's have some fun. So we're at Unita Burger on Fremont Avenue. They have some great burgers here, over the top, Philly smash, they got awesome chili, and great fries. So after lunch, you can also go just north of here to the Woodland Park Zoo and check out some animals, maybe swing with some monkeys. So let's go in and check it out. Thank you for joining us. Today we have Peter uh, from the Unita Burger, and we're gonna find out a little bit more about what goes into Unita Burger, the history, uh, the name definitely. So um, so let's start with you, Peter. Sure. What's your history? What's, what's the deal? Um, well, I uh, was born and raised in Seattle. I've um, kind of grew up here with some accepted times for all my life. Um, and uh, I started cooking in restaurants um, kind of while I was in college. I went to school back east, so I was, I was out of uh, Seattle for about four or five years, and, um, and I developed an even greater love for Seattle in absentia, uh, because there are, you know, as far as places to call home go, right. like this is one of the best ones. Right. Um, so, uh, and of course, that's a biased opinion, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, I, uh, I, I was studied history in college, uh, but I, I went to school in Providence, where there's also a, uh, a very fine cooking school called Johnson and Wales. And consequently, there there are a lot of restaurants that open up there. There's a lot of uh, investment capital there for opening restaurants um, to because of the the good talent pool of, of cooks out there. And uh -huh. so I would spend a lot of time, kind of, um, you know doing prep work and making a little extra money on the side and doing things like that. So, um, and I've always come from a family that cooks a lot, so I've always been into cooking. And uh, when I came back to Seattle, I, I got a job cooking and thought it was gonna be temporary and it uh, turned into uh, a passion and I decided to do it for a career. Great. So, whether or not that was a good decision was yet to be borne out. Well, but. our viewers are gonna find out. That's a great decision. <laughs> We're all glad, and uh, that's why we're here, because uh, you've got a uh, great menu that we're going to get to in a little bit. But um, one of my favorite things is uh, the names of places, and mm -hmm. um, some people are like, ah, who cares about the name? I do, and uh, you need a burger. I love the name. Um, is there anything special? Or I mean, I know what it means when I say it, <laughs> but how did it come about? There's many connotations. Okay. Um, actually, the name is inherited to a certain extent. So, so the owner, Scott Staples, um, he has wanted to open a burger joint for a long time. Um, he, uh, he opened up Restaurant Zoe, which is his first restaurant, um, uh, down in Belltown over 10 years ago. Um, and then, you know, he had traveled around. He does a lot of food research, which is the great part of it, one of the great parts of his shop. Um, uh, he's a big fan of Shake Shack and, uh, and Taylor's Refresher down in, in, uh, in California. And those are kind of the model upon which we're loosely built here. Um, when the space for Quinn's Pub, which is this other restaurant up on Capitol Hill, became open, they, he and his wife Heather realized it was too big to do the kind of burger concept. So they put it on hold, and they opened up a fantastic gastro pub. Um, I worked briefly for him, but I kind of crossed paths with him in the past uh, at Quinn's. Uh, I went on to do some other things, uh, and then when I saw that they were hiring for a general manager, I applied and we talked, and uh, I thought it was going to be a good fit, so we came on board. Um, I started working for Scott on this restaurant about two months before it opened, and I don't think they had really settled on a name. Um, they were kind of mulling some different ones around, but 
on the top of this building here, this building used to be Unita Auto and Boat Rebuild um, long ago when it was initially when it was initially built. Um, and uh, you know, so we would just say, "Hey, we'll meet you at Unita. We'll meet you at Unita," because it was written on the building. Uh -huh. uh, kind of stuck, and so we actually took the sign off the top of the building when we did the build out, and now it's now it's our counter, as you can see over there. That yeah. is original from the 60s. Uh, there were just a little bit of touch-up paint, but aside from that, um, and it really makes sense. It's, you know, it's kind of, it's not a question of desire, you know, it's, it's a state of being. Uh -huh. It's, you know, a matter of necessity. You don't just want a burger. You don't feel like a burger. You yeah. need a burger. When yeah. you need a burger, here. Yeah, I think we all so, need a burger. <laughs> so that's kind of how the name came about. It has a certain campiness to it, but we didn't come up with it. We did inherit it. It just fit really well. Wow. We ran with it. So That's a great story. Yeah. Um, I see the sign out there, and I, I look at the sign, and I go, well, this place hasn't been here. The sign looks like it's been there for 100 years. <laughs> I know, right. So I'm kind of going, it's kind of confusing, but I don't, whatever. It's great. I'm just going to go here and eat, but... That's amazing uh, that you've taken one name from another business and used it along. Yeah, no, you make it work. You know? Yeah, yeah, so. because I mean, I know that coming up with names for certain things, it's just like, ah, it can be frustrating. Indeed. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the foods. Um, I think that, uh, you know, what what is the process that you guys go through? Because you guys have a huge menu, um, some great sides. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just kind of curious if, uh, you know, you guys have... Dr. Frankenstein back there making some. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what your perception it's is. It's alive. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, one thing is that I, you know, I've, I've worked uh, in kitchens for a really long time. So in that time, you're able to kind of absorb a, a vast wealth of knowledge. I have a really round uh, kitchen experience. So I've worked, you know, for all different kinds of restaurants, so doing all different cooking styles and all different price points. Um, now, Scott's approach to things, and Scott and I see things eye to eye on you know, almost 100% of the time, That's especially great. with regard to the food. We're definitely into getting the, the best ingredients we can, trying to source them as locally as possible. Um, and then treating them with the kind of respect that kind of the fine dining places do. Um, because it, there's not, all it takes is technique at that point. It doesn't uh -huh. cost you any more once you have those ingredients in to treat them really well. And sometimes it's a question of, you know, getting out of the way, saying this is good as it is. Let's just put it on there and Try not to, Very you know, simple. right, let's not overdo it. Yeah. Um, so to that end, we've got the number one classic. Uh, you know, we do all, all of our, our meat here is locally sourced. And, um, okay. you know, so we use Painted Hills all natural beef. And, uh, you know, we do offer the, the Gleason Ranch 100% uh, grass fed. And that's also 28 day age. So that stuff is fantastic. That makes All our chicken and pork and everything else is, is, uh, is locally sourced. And uh, the turkey as well for our turkey burgers. As far as menu development goes, I mean, the, the, the heart of the menu is really Scott's. Um, you know, he'd been dreaming about opening a place like this for a number of years before, uh, before we ever, before he, this space became available. Uh -huh. um, and so he had, you know, notebooks full of ideas and he was really able to pare it down. Uh, when I came in, I basically helped him kind of refine some of the recipes and then uh, once we opened, then it's the process of, uh, tweaking the systems and you know yeah. small changes until yeah. you get it just the way you want. Uh, listening to your customers is really important. You know, taking their feedback um, and trying to improve things that way. So you know, we started with our core menu, which is still intact. And then you know, I I, I really have to give credit to, to my cooks and to my counter people. We've got fantastic staff here. Um, you know, they make it all possible. And you know, I've got a lot of creative minds in the kitchen and. Uh, you know, it benefits us because it keeps them interested. You know, you never want to be doing repetitive motion every single day for, yeah. you know, you tend to bore people. Um, and so, you know, we, I give them an opportunity to work on creativity. We do things collaboratively. And then, you know, we I mean, we put three new specials on the menu today. So, wow. um, you know, so I get to come in and play around with that and it's fun. <laughs> we, we get to do those things. So. Um, you know, that's kind of how the menu came about, and we just try to stretch, you know, we, we've got some higher ticket items on there. We do have a lamb burger um, with, you know, imported manchego cheese from the La Mancha region of Spain and, you know, chermula, um, uh, like a chermula spiced cumin and lemon mayo that's on there with um, tempura battered deep fried um, uh, preserved lemons that we wow. preserve in house and thin slice, but then also we could just do the classic with lettuce, tomato, pickle, and our our house sauce. So you know we've <laughs> we've we've got you we've got something for everybody. Exactly, like, uh, that's what we try to do. We try to know. afford people the opportunity to uh, you know to come in and and you know you can get the classic for 
you know, for, for under $5, and, uh, or you can splurge and, and get something that's a little more pricey, but um, yeah. we, we like to, to leave the options that's open. That's nice. So. I, yeah, I like the classic. Uh, I usually get the classic just so I can taste the meat, kind of taste what it tastes like, you know, but sure. um, yeah, I came here, and I think I had the Philly Smash, mm -hmm. and... Uh, <laughs> that's popular. It's pretty amazing, and you know, the fries and the sides. We're gonna see all those things coming out here real soon, and um, just, like I said, it's, it's awesome, it's a great, Great burger, great place to eat. Um, it's still it's still the structural of a of a garage, um, yeah. which is so in the summer you guys open the garage doors open up. This this area out here, um, which we call the annex, um, didn't exist before. We actually built all that out, oh, okay. um, and uh, we just needed the extra seating. But these two interior garage doors are original to the building. They're still working on all their same hardware, um, and in the summertime we basically become an indoor outdoor restaurant. In the wintertime, it's still nice and cozy. We've got heat in there. We've got you know speakers for the stereo, and uh, and it becomes and we, we have you know we, we have insinuated ourselves into the community to the extent that we see a lot of the same people over and over again, and we're yeah. able to you know see the kids get bigger and yeah. watch them change grades nice. in school, and you know yeah. um, and watch their taste change with regard to our food, <laughs> things like that. You know, we, we try to accommodate families as well. We're you know it's, it's during Halloween at the yeah. time of this taping, so. You know, we've got our little mini pumpkin decorating thing. We'll do stuff for Thanksgiving. We'll do stuff for the holidays. Nice. Well, any excuse to kind of, you know, decorate the restaurant with artwork that was made by our patrons is <laughs> uh, we're going to take it and go with it. So That's nice. Yeah, the whole community thing in that, you know, I've, I've been here in Fremont for a couple of days and it's, uh, you know, everywhere is like that. It's just, you know, it's, they enjoy the community and the people that come are yeah. the regulars and... It's nice. It's not very nice. Yeah, it's good. I mean, this this little area in North Fremont here, um, you know, there was very little here when we first opened. Uh, there was a different restaurant across the street than there is now. Um, uh, you know, Paseos Cuban Sandwiches is an institution, and they're they're going to be there forever. Um, my wife oftentimes comes into the restaurant to borrow money from me so she can go <laughs> to Paseo. She openly cheats on us with with Paseo, but it's fine. We were raised. It's like, on give that me the stuff. money. Give me the money. Yeah. Oh, look. There we the go. Foods are on, man. Mm. Um, and so. Uh, and you know, and since then we've had a lot of a lot of different businesses come in, and everyone's great, and it really feels like a community. We've got lots of single-family homes and tons of apartment, uh, uh, you know, uh, zoning here as well. So there are there's a high density of, of people here, um, yeah. and we see we get it from all strata. So it's it's really great. We get a really feel like we're, we're part of the community and we get to involve ourselves in things like trick-or-treat, you know, which the mm -hmm. Fremont Council does. You can't, can't even hand it out, so. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah, nice. I find that the adults mostly eat the candy, but <laughs> what are you going to do, you know? Give it it's too much hand slapping. Exactly. Don't give it to me, give it to the kid. <laughs> yeah, many of the pumpkins were also colored by the adults, so. Just, you know, we get a lot of kids at heart in the yeah, restaurant. Yeah, that's good, out, so. that's good. So, don't mean to cut you off, but, you sure. know, I had to do it because we've got this food here and uh, let's start with the the forefront here with this tower of uh, amazing looking onions. Yeah, those are onion rings. We uh, we, we sliced all our onions um, by hand here and, and we uh, we portion them out. We make uh, tempura batter uh, in-house with um, cheap beer and other deliciousnesses. Um, uh, it took us about three months to get the recipe to where it is now. And um, we, my sister actually describes the onion rings as crisp-tastic, which pretty sure is Boom. not a word, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to nominate it for That's Webster, a good for you know, and Chris maybe Dostin. get it in the dictionary wow. for next year, in the next couple of years. Um, you know, so so we do those, and um, we use that tempura batter for a couple other ingredients that we'll get to in a bit. So, yeah, those are the onion rings. It did take us a long time to get them where they are now, but uh, we're, we're pretty happy with with uh, with what we got out of it. So that's amazing. Very light and, and crunchy, and. The onion soft, mm -hmm. and I'm not. You know, you notice I'm not pulling the onion right out. That's one thing we really wanted to avoid was the uh, the, cool. the 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 onion burn that comes down people's chin when they pull that onion out, and it like That's you can recognize that. that. It's like the onion soul touch. I hate you that. Know? You it's a first degree burn on the chin. Your we next bite is that. nothing but flour. Yeah, you never want to burn your customers. It's terrible for uh, repeat business. So. Mm. Okay. A burger. All right, so the burger that is accompanying that side of rings here is, uh, this is the number five, the Sonora. Um, it is our uh, Southwest Flavors burger. This is, in fact, my favorite burger. And I, I say that, I can say it over here because I'm far from the menu, but I don't want to say it in front of the menu because the other burgers may hear me and get jealous. But this really is 
our favorite burger. I, I have uh, demoed this um, on a TV show before, um, and uh, we did a benefit for Beef Counts last year, and this is the, the one that we chose. But essentially, we take uh, fresh Anaheim and Pasilla peppers, and we roast them over the open flame. Uh, we peel them, de-seed them, mix them with uh, sauteed sweet onions, uh, fresh lime juice, some lime zest, a little bit of sweet and sour. That's the chili relish, and then it has Melty Bubbly Monterey Jack cheese on there, pickled jicama, julienne radish, fresh pig cilantro leaves, and a smoky, tangy, spicy, cumini mayo sauce on there as well. Really? And if you really, yeah, really. And if you really want to, you can add bacon as well. We don't frown <laughs> upon that. So um, we definitely know. go by the added. So my, yeah, tear into it. My positioning what you think. here. Indeed. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, that's the one. That's usually how we want our customers to sound when they're eating the burgers, it's, uh, unable to speak. It's the best compliment we can get. Mm. Mm. I've had this before. It's yeah. still amazing. This is the one I, I, I try not to eat it too often. I try to only eat it about three times a week. It is difficult working at a burger joint, trying not to trying to obey doctor's orders and not. It's got that too sweet. many burgers. It's got the little bit of the spiciness mm -hmm. coming through. It's amazing. If you don't mind getting messy, that's, that's the way to go right there. We don't have a limit on napkins, so <laughs> you can use as many as you want when you come in here. As Pete told me earlier, dry cleaning is not on there. <laughs> we will not pay for dry cleaning. This yeah, you got to take responsibility for your own thing, but uh, aside delicious. from that, yes, we'll give you as many napkins as you need, and you know, as it's many not too washes. hot, not too spicy. Yeah, we can, we call it like a slow burn. We're not using any uh, of the really spicy uh, peppers, no jalapenos, no serranos. Um, Good. But uh, you know, the the fresh Anaheim some pasillas lend that little bit of a burn. It kind of mm -hmm. lingers a little bit on the tongue, but it's not going to blow anyone out of the water. Yeah, yeah, I, I can feel that right now. It's just it's just nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, which one do you want to go to next? Well, I think, you know, from there, uh, we'll probably that, end with the classic. So you know, this one's staring us in the face. So I think the uh, that's the number nine. Uh, we call it the Mediterra. It's our, that's our lamb burger. Check this out, um, We get the lamb from uh, Cottage Grove, Oregon, from a place called Hollow oh, Ranch. Um, it's some of the best ground lamb um, I've ever had in my life. Uh, and uh, that's where we start. So we start with six ounces of this delicious, all naturally raised, um, you know, all, all grass-fed um, lamb uh, from Cottage Grove. And then from there we build up. So um, we've got uh, sauteed peppers and onions that go on there. Um, there are, of course, our, our preserved lemons that we tempura batter and deep fried. Come on in, you guys. How's it going? <laughs> Uh, and those go on there. That was uh, that's one of the probably the most well-known uh, ingredients on our menu, and that's definitely straight from Scott, um, one of one of his uh, one of his genius ideas, one of many that he has. So so that's on there. There's uh, manchego cheese, which is a, a bright tangy sheep's cheese uh, from La Mancha in Spain that we have on there. Uh, there is um, uh, fresh arugula and cilantro leaves, and then like uh, a lemon uh, garlic cilantro. Uh, paprika mayo that goes on there as well. And of course it's on a uh, Macrina artisan brioche bun. So um, we actually it's had just, to, yeah, it's, that That's one's, amazing. I mean, I'm, there's. But <laughs> I could talk all day about it. So you should probably tear into it before it gets cold. But, um, oh, I'm sure it's yes, getting cold too. <laughs> it is. This is definitely not one of our um, cleanest burgers to eat, but. Uh, uh, it's already. <laughs> yeah, it's there. We oftentimes will just buy, bring people uh, uh, knives and forks, you know, when, when these come out. Okay, there we there go. There you go. That is the perfect bite you're staring at right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't try this at home. <laughs> I think you're safe. We have to come here. <laughs> That's different. It's very good. There's a lot going on there. Absolutely. A and lot. you know, we allow people to, so you can still sub out the lamb patty on any one of the other burgers, but you know, this is why oh, we feature it. Oh man, that so, lemon. Yeah, it's in there. It's wow. It's robust flavor. I've never had a lemon like that. Very good. I mean, I truthfully, I can barely taste the lamb. Because <laughs> there's so many bright colors in there and flavors, it just, wow. That's amazing. Hats off to that. Yeah, that's a good one. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. 
What do we got here? Well, that's our, uh, that's our Rocky Mountain chili. This is actually, you know, this is definitely like a Scott Staples kind of family recipe. Um, it's, it's a chili con carne, but with, uh, with pinto beans as well. Um, it's, uh, it's got some, um, some smoky uh, chipotle in there. Um, some, uh, it's got, you know, a, a lot of cumin. So it's kind of an amalgamation of, uh, of styles from, from Texas, New Mexico, um, you know, the, the northern states of, uh, of Mexico, Sonora. Um, and, uh, but I mean, Scott is, he's from Colorado and, and this is kind of, you know, what his idea of chili is. Of course, we use this on our chili cheese fries, our chili dog. We do not have a chili burger on the menu, but we have a couple patrons that will come in and do the open face chili burger and we're only too happy to accommodate yeah. them. So, uh, we just top it with, uh, with, um, some, some fresh, uh, red onion and, uh, a little bit of scallion and, and some shredded, uh, cheddar cheese, of course, to melt in there. But, um... You know, that cooks on the stove for a long time. It's actually one of the more complex recipes at the restaurant. So something as simple as chili sometimes takes a, a little more care. You know, chili is, to me, I think it's a regional thing and everyone has their, what they think chili is. Sure. And truthfully, and I'm being truthfully honest here, this is the stuff that I grew up on. And I've been looking for chili, you know, you're looking for chili and it's always different or it's meat, there's no beans. Yeah. The bean, everything about this chili reminds me of home. And I, I've told my friends, and I've actually, you saw me come here, and i talking to you just on an interview, and I'm like, i got to take some chili home. <laughs> Indeed. No, we're only too and happy it's, to uh, it. It's just amazing. You know, it's, it's that, what I know is good chili. It's got the redness, the sauce, the flavor, and you have the ground beef in there, which is excellent. Yeah. The beans are done well. They're not, you know, undercooked at all. Yeah, those are kind of the, those are the little bits, the, the details that we really yes. try to, to, uh, yes. to focus on because, um, you know, those little things, you know, when you're, when you strip it all down to these recipes, uh, there's not a lot to hide behind. So you really got to mm. be exact with it. And that's, like I said, my guys do a great job. So, so the chili definitely is thumbs up, uh, for me, anyways, and I know, like I said, people have their different opinions. Of we what don't chili get too is. many complaints. Of, uh, chili. It's like some other foods that we'll have to deal with later on down the road. But <laughs> at this point, chili thumbs up. I'm, I'm right. down with that. Um, amazing. So let's uh, let's go to this boring old classic. Yeah, I know, right? Well, the classic. And this is what I tell all of our customers. This is essentially our mission statement in burger form. Um, this is like what, what we envision that backyard, summertime, beer with your buds kind of burger. This is yes. what we, we came up with. It's a quarter pound of Painted Hills uh, beef. Uh, we hand form all the patties in house, of course. Um, it's got lettuce, tomato, pickle, uh, our house sauce, which is like a light horseradish Dijon mayo. Uh, we allow people to get ketchup and mustard at the table as they see fit. Um, and on this one, we put bacon and cheddar because that's what I eat for lunch like four days a week. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking really at this good. thing going classic. Oh, this is like amazing yeah, looking. Yeah, it's I good. Mean, so, and this is really what it's all about here. I mean, this was our attempt to just use the good ingredients, cook it right, get out of the way, and, and let it speak for itself. And so um, we'll let it speak for itself. Like the bacon flying out of there. Indeed. Yeah, how you cook the bacon is important. So oh. we try to make it crispy, but, you know, not burnt. That's always a little delicate. I got a technique. Nice. <laughs> what can you say? Amazing. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, straightforward. Bacon's done right. Excellent meat. Everything else on this. Yep. That's awesome. That's what you try to hit. You know, I'm thinking to myself, oh, look at these mirrors. I, you know, this one's going to be like, uh, no. It stands right along with these. Oh, yeah. It yeah. just depends on your mood, you know? Yeah. We encourage people to try to work their way through the whole menu and see what they, oh. see what they come up with. And then start over again. Tomato, done. you can taste the tomatoes, mm -hmm. and the lettuce is nice and crunchy, and God, man, I love this place. <laughs> oh, now, real quick, Yeah. the fries. Yeah. I think you guys do the most amazing fries. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like a fry aficionado, sure. like a lot of other people. Indeed. But they gotta be crunchy on the outside, nice and gold, and uh -huh. soft on the inside. Yeah. 
and that's what you've done. Yeah, we, uh, a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, we 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 use a technique that's been you know uh, has been honed and refined for for hundreds of years, and that's kind of the the Belgian frite technique. But uh, first, we start with uh, the best uh, fried potatoes we can find, which are uh, Kennebec potatoes. They're a um, uh, a low starch, really low sugar russet potato. Um, and they're all from Washington, and uh, they are the best fried potatoes. They have very little sugar, and um, and uh, they have very small starch molecules, so they don't um, they crisp up a lot a lot nicer than other fries, and they retain their crispiness while still having that central in the middle fluffy potato cloud yeah. that people are looking for. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah, we start with the good potatoes, and then we um, we, we blanch them in uh, in hot oil uh, uh, two days. We, first, we, we we cut them, we hand cut them here. We soak them overnight in water. We drain them off the next day, rinse them. Then we we cook them first. We blanch them for uh, you know uh, about two minutes. Then we lay them out on sheet trays. They sit overnight to let the starches crystallize on the outside, and then and then we bring them in. Then there's three more cooks before we actually pick them up on the line. We do a preliminary one where they go down for about five minutes and they sit and then we pick up orders out of that once, twice and um, uh -huh. that's the routine. It's, it sounds complicated. It's even more complicated when we're, you know, when there's a line out the door and every seat is full <laughs> and there's 30 orders of fries coming up. Uh, we find that the, the pantry is actually the most difficult station in our, in our restaurant. Well, for that reason, I try to avoid it at all costs. We definitely um, appreciate that part. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I'm sitting here going, wow, that, I mean, that's why they're so good, you know, is that uh, you take the time yeah. and the effort to do it the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah, it's technique, once again. Um, yeah, technique. I mean, you've shown that technique is a good key to have to making a successful anything. Sure. Uh, so this is this is amazing. I mean, like I said, I I definitely am not faking it here. Everything I've had, and I've had some stuff before that I came in here before, and it's always top notch, delicious, and great service. Um, just I just love the place. And, uh, it's one of the reasons I have on the show is because it's a quality place so um well we appreciate being invited it's certainly you know any chance to uh to have people in and you know get the word out about what we're doing here is uh yeah. is certainly welcome and yeah. uh you know it works out so so thanks for coming by you're always welcome thanks, to eat a burger of all course. right we'll take one more bite here please be my guest Delicious. Thanks for joining us at You Need a Burger. This is Big Eat Small Spots. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on Big Eat Small Spots. I had a blast. I hope you did too. So I hope you join us on BigEatSmallSpots.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and also, don't forget to tip your server. Happy to be a part of America's first multi-channel online television network, Aerial Media Group. Watch for Big Eat Small Spots on foodie.tv. Check, please.